Number 31. Of what material is a resistor made if its resistance is 40% greater at 100 degrees Celsius than at 20 degrees Celsius? All right. So first thing is take a look at 29 for an overall uh, overview of this concept and take a look at then number 30 for the how to deal with percentages. I'm going to run through this one though now, okay? So uh, remember the general idea though is that as the temperature increases of a material, the resistance will increase. It's a basic linear relationship. So uh, what I know is that, uh, now it depends on how you define initial and final. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my, um, so let's just write out the variables, my initial resistance, my final resistance, I'll write down the initial temperature, I'm going to write down the final temperature. I also know that if I'm talking about changes in resistance and I'm talking about changes in temperature, then I must need the alpha value of the particular material. Okay. And like I said, take a look at number 29. So um, let's first work with the temperatures. The initial temperature, what do you want it to be? Well, it sounds like to me it's going to start at 20, right? So let's plug in the 20 degrees Celsius there. It's going to go to 100. Okay, great. Now, it says that um, the resistance at 100 degrees Celsius, aka the final temperature, right, is going to be 40% greater than at 20 which was the initial temperature. So what they're basically telling us is that the initial resistance here is going to be some value we don't know. But the, the final resistance is going to be 40% larger, aka 1.4, multiplied by the initial resistance. If this is confusing, just take a look at number 30. So I realize now that the only unknown here is going to be my alpha value. And guess what? Look at the table. All these materials have different alpha values. So, hmm, if I can find then the alpha value, does that would that tell me then the nature of the material I'm dealing with? And if that was your thought process, I applaud you. Perfect. So let's write out the formula. One minus one plus alpha times the change in temperature. Remember the change in temperature. I'm going to though write as final minus initial. Final minus initial. I'm going to plug in what I know. So this is 1.4 R sub I times an R sub I times then 1 plus the alpha value. I don't know what it is, but the final temperature was 100 minus the initial is 20. That looks like 210, but it's 20. Okay. So let's simplify this a little bit. Um, yeah. So why don't we do 1.4 times R I equals R I times in one plus now, the difference here is going to be 80. 80 times alpha is just 80 alpha. Now I realize that I got two R sub I's here, but so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide it on out for both sides. And why do I do that? Well, look, it just cancels, right? Huh. Now I only have one unknown. So you might initially look at it and say, God, I got two unknowns. You know, I'm going to need another equation. Well, that might be a good first thought to have. However, though, what I would do is I would first simplify it a little bit. See where you can get. If you can get one of the variables to cancel, do you need another equation? Absolutely not. All right. So don't just necessarily look at this setup here and say, oh, I got two unknowns. Right. Um, I, I know I underlined three things, but these are the same. So, you know, just take a step back, maybe do a little simplification. If you're trying to, you know, manipulate this and you can't get rid of any of the variable, you know, any variable, um, then you will need another equation. But all right, enough of that, right? Let's just get back to the bath. So I got that left on the right hand side, subtract the one from both sides. All right, great. So that's 0.4 is equal to now 80 alpha. And I'm going to divide them by 80 on both sides. So I'm going to realize that my alpha value is going to be 0.4 divided by 80. And we get a value of about five times in terms of scientific notation times 10 to the minus three. The units of alpha is basically per Celsius. All right, per, per degree Celsius. So that, okay, cool. So this is the alpha value. Now let's see, can we find that alpha value in our table? Okay. Hmm. Oh, look, there it is. Iron. So the answer here is iron. I R O N iron guys. Thank you very much for tuning. In. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, hit that like button and tell your friends. We'll see you soon. Take care.